Morning folks, Monday morning, coffee with Job. Why do people give up on Christianity? Why do people who've maybe got a nominal faith give up? That's one thing, but maybe other people who seem to have a deeper faith also give up. I wonder if even you're one of those people or if you've been tempted in that way. Well, in Job chapter 21, we get given a really good reason why people get, well, what appears to be a really good reason. This is Job arguing against Bildad, and Bildad has this idea, good people get rewarded, bad people get punished. You live a good life and all the rest of it. So, this is what Job says in response. Now, if you want to see the earlier parts of the chapter, just go to the earlier videos for this. But, verse 22, can anyone teach knowledge to God since he judges even the highest? One person dies in full vigor, completely secure and at ease, well nourished in body, bones rich with marrow. Another dies in bitterness of soul, never having enjoyed anything good. Side by side they lie in the dust and worms cover them both. I know full well what you're thinking, the schemes by which you would wrong me. You say, where now is the house of the great, the tents where the wicked lived? But have you never questioned those who travel? Have you paid no regard to their accounts, that the wicked are spared from the day of calamity, that they are delivered from the day of wrath? Who denounces their conduct to their face? Who repays them for what they have done? They are carried to the grave and watches kept over their tombs. The soil in the valley is sweet to them. Everyone follows after them and a countless throng goes before them. So how can you console me with your nonsense? Nothing is left of your answers but falsehood. Nonsense and falsehood, by the way, they are characteristics of our culture. And that's why we need truth. And that's why we need to speak the truth of the gospel. And that's why this is just so precious and so wonderful. So, why do some people give up belief? Well, it's seeming injustice. Now, let's do this at two levels. First of all, there are those who've never really believed, who have some vague notion of God, some kind of moralistic, therapeutic deism. You know, the kind of person who would say, and I've actually heard this, I don't believe in God because... My granny died and I prayed she wouldn't die and he didn't hear my prayer. I don't believe in God because I was desperate about passing my exams and I didn't pass them. I don't believe in God because my cat died. I mean, it's extraordinary. It just, it really is quite extraordinary people. Because the reason they give up belief in God is because the God they believed in doesn't exist. You know, a, a God who makes sure your granny never dies and your cat never dies and you never fail exams. Where, where, do you, where do you get that idea of God? That's not what the Bible teaches and it's not what we observe. Or much more seriously are people who go, well, I've sought to serve God and I've done what I can and it just hasn't worked out. You know, the wife who said, I love my husband, I submitted to him, I cared, I did everything that I could and he still left me. Or the parents who say, well, we brought up our child in the fear of the Lord and it didn't work out. Or the man who says, I, I didn't cheat at, at work or lie or steal, and my business went bankrupt and then the guy down the road who's cheating and lying all the time, he prospered. Those things can happen. So this is what Job does here. You'll notice very carefully, he contrasts two deaths. Somebody who dies in an old age, at peace, wealthy and wicked. And someone else who has a miserable life and may be righteous. One has a long, happy life. The other has a miserable life. Who had the better life? The one who didn't care for God. So what's the point? That's a really serious question. And here's the thing. What's really said in all of this is that it's not all about this life. You take a look around you, says Job, come out of your shell and see what happens. But you have to step back even further and you have to see things. So this is Psalm 73. I saw the wicked prosper and I doubted and I was in fear and then I understood their eternal destiny. A bad person may enjoy a good life and a good person a bad life, so what's the point? Well, Jesus, let me read you what Jesus says in Luke 16. This is Jesus' answer to that. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. 
At his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus, covered with sores, and longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked his sores. The time came when the beggar died and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was in torment, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. So he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, because I am in agony in this fire. But Abraham replied, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things, while Lazarus received bad things, but now he is comforted here and you are in agony. And besides all this, between us and you a great chasm has been set in place, so that those who want to go from here to you cannot, nor can anyone cross over from there to us. He answered, Then I beg you, Father, send Lazarus to my family, for I have five brothers. Let him warn them, so they will not also come to this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. No, Father Abraham, he said, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. He said to him, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. Well, I wanted to read that to you, even though our time has gone. It's an amazing, incredible story. This life is not all there is. We're being prepared for something more. And you need to think about justice and what is good and how to live in the context of eternity. See you tomorrow. Bye.